I'm doing a little bit of finish up work on the bumper and guess what I purchased. It's a worn VR Evo series, 8,000 pound winch for the front of the LJ. Some people might ask why I bought an Evo series instead of one of the uh, higher end worn Xeons and whatever. And I'm gonna be completely honest, price. This thing was 600, I think, bucks versus 12 to 15 to almost two grand you could spend on a nice high end worn. Why didn't I go buy a Harbor Freight model or Super Winch or whatever? The bottom line is I wanted to pay around 500 bucks what I did because I, I had a gift certificate for 100 bucks at Quadratech. So I put that along with the fact that the winch was on sale and I spent like 580 bucks. To buy a winch for 500 bucks, you're looking at a budget winch. If I'm buying a budget winch, like the Evo series, I want a name like Warren behind it, plain and simple. So here it is. So you guys might remember that I had picked up a used 12K winch. In fact, it's sitting right over there. See that box? That's a Warren M12000. Okay, I picked it up used. I have no idea how old it is. No idea what it's been through. No idea how well it works. I know that the solenoid engages and the motor spins. There's no cable on it. There's no decent fair lead with it. There's nothing. Um, my plan originally was to put it on here, but some people talked me out of that because they said a 12,000 pound winch is just too much for the frame of a TJ. If you stall that winch out, it's probably gonna bend the frame and that's a bad thing. 8,000 pound winch makes a lot more sense for a TJ that weighs just over four. So uh, the plan is, since we have the four-door JK, I've told you that I plan on doing some fabrication for the JK as well. Well, the first project I wanna do for the JK is a JK bumper with a winch sunk into the frame. That's gonna be the winch that I put into the frame. So what I'm gonna do is start shopping around to get parts for the M12K and get it working again. I mean, it, kind of, it already does work technically, but I wanna clean it up and fix it up. Then I'm gonna build a winch bumper for the front of the wife's JK. Anyone who's curious, the JK is going to slowly but surely turn into our family slash adventure rig. And this is gonna slowly but surely turn into a little more of a rock crawler rig. That's what I like to do. This vehicle is better suited for rock crawling, I think, than the big four-door JKs are because this is lighter, it's got a shorter wheelbase, all the things I like, all the things that lend themselves well to Pennsylvania wheeling. So this thing's gonna get built into something that can handle the tougher trails at places like AOAA and Roush Creek. The JK is gonna turn into something more like what this is now, which is just a moderately built all-purpose wheeler uh, that can just go out and have a good day on the trails and maybe a good night of camping at the end of the day. Um, but I think that'll be served well to have a winch. Small lift, um, Maybe lockers, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll throw a limited slip in the back of that thing and call it done. I, I don't know. But uh, that thing's going to turn into that. Uh, what I'm going to do today uh, is I'm going to get it out of the box, show you guys what's in the box and whatnot. And I'm going to start figuring out what I got to do to the bumper to get it mounted. So what I'm going to do is get the winch set on here and figure out where the guard is going to have to go. Figure out where I'm going to have to drill to mount the winch. Figure out where the Fairley's going to have to get drilled, stuff like that and I'll get an actual guard cut. Once that's all done, then we're gonna mount it on the Jeep and I'll show you how to install the winch. There were three boxes and a winch in the box. Uh, the winch, some instructions here, and this is the main body of the winch here. It's got really beefy power cords, which is cool. I sort of expected as much. I'm not gonna be able to pick this up one-handed. Let me get it out of the box. So, uh, make a guard that clears this. Figure out what the dimensions have to be for the, where the fair lead comes through. I opted for synthetic rope. Tony at Jeep Talk Show can eat his heart out. It was an extra 200 bucks when I bought the damn thing. I could have bought this for as low as like 480, I think, was the price for steel cable. But there's two things I don't like about steel cable. One is it's heavy, which is, you know, unfortunate. And two, it kills people. I don't like killing people. It's bad stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where this fits on the bumper. And then I'm going to see if I can figure out what to do about a guard for the front. I've got scrap steel left over from the bumper build over here. I'm hoping that something I've got in there will work for the guard. Then I just need to get it fabbed up and weld it on. So I found in the handy dandy instruction manual 
that the bowls at the bottom of the winch to mount to your plate with are 10 inches apart and four and a half inches deep. So I made these two lines. I found the middle of the bumper, which is 20 inches because the whole thing's 40 inches across. And then I measured out five inches from each side. They line up perfect. So that is how it's going to look sitting on the bumper. Now, yes, it looks a little off center. That's because this side of the winch is about two inches deeper than this side. So uh, now I know where it's going to sit on the bumper. The next thing that I want to do is actually drill for the holes to mount it with. So I'm going to figure out, I think, how far back from the front it wants to sit, which might be right where it is, right? So this gives me room for the guard I need to put in front of here. Uh, and then I will mark and go four and a half inches back on each side and mark again, and that's where my hole should go. Well, folks, I've done the unthinkable. I know this looks just like in the last shot, but what you don't know is that I have two bolts in the front. And they line the hell up. That's a first for me, guys. I drilled two holes and didn't have to widen them or file them or anything. I'm apparently getting better at this. I have to drill the two rear ones, which will be like the real moment of truth, but that's about how far back it's gonna sit on the bumper. I wanted it sitting as far back as possible so that I'd have enough room to make that guard for the front. And then maybe someday when I have a tube bender, I'll make some kind of a hoop. Folks, I deserve a beer. You know why? I've got all four holes drilled and they all line up. They all match up, they fit. It's amazing. Look at that, all four. All right, folks, so my goal tonight is to figure out how to mount this fair lead on my nice bumper. So I did some looking around, figure out what the dimensions and whatnot are of a Fairlead mount. One thing I learned, I was under the impression that the Fairlead mount actually bared some kind of load. Here's that it doesn't. Its only purpose in life is to hold this thing up. And of course, withstand the amount of pressure it takes when you pull the winch in, you know, pull the hook in. So, but basically a lot of Fairlead mounts are nothing more than a couple tabs that mount to the back of the Fairlead and hold it in place. That makes my job pretty easy. Pretty much anything that I build that's stronger than that will be better than that than some fairly mounts. So this is about what I've come up with. I'm gonna make the whole thing about 17 and a half inches wide. These outer lines here are the outer edges of the fairly. These black traces here are of course the holes in the fair lead. Left myself about a little over a quarter inch at the bottom here to make room for where I'm gonna weld at. The idea here is out here, these are going to angle down and then these are going to bend back slightly to give me some rigidity at the outer edges of this thing. It's going to be just a hair taller than the fair lead, giving me a little room at the top if I ever want to add tabs for lights or something. That's a thing I'm thinking about. I don't know if it's ever actually going to happen. Ignore the two silly ones over there. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I have help today. So I made up this nice fair lead mount here and I'm about to weld it onto the, don't touch it, it's still hot. So I mounted the winch up so I could see where this fair lead mount would sit in comparison to the winch. So that's about where it's gonna sit. It's a little bit off center at the moment, but I'm gonna center that up and then it's gonna get tack welded on there and then I'm gonna weld it. So there you have it, folks. Check it out. I like he. Just enough clearance there. I think anyway, I don't think that's supposed to be that close. Obviously I don't have the, the cable through it yet or anything, but I mean, the fair lead lines up just about with the bottom of the drum, which I think is about what you're supposed to be doing. There's no like, abrasive that's going to contact the uh, um, the cable when it's going in or out. I don't know how well you can see behind there, but that's how that looks. See if I can focus. There we go. Now I got to test out those recovery points and then I will paint this thing and get it all installed on the Jeep. All right, so a few days ago, I started getting the bumper prepped to mount the winch 
and that was the first part of this video. Then I took the bomber out and tested it to make sure it wasn't going to fall apart when I tried to recover somebody using these recovery points. And you saw that video. Now, the bumper is painted, the bumper is ready to be mounted, and it's got a winch on it. Now what I need to do is try to take this whole thing with the winch on it and get it on there. Because once it's on there, I can't get to the bottom of the bumper to, uh, to get the bolts that mount the winch in. I can get to two of them, but not all four of them. So, I have it all mounted and ready to go. Now I'm going to try to get it onto the Jeep. I don't know how well it's going to work. Hopefully the next shot will have the bumper on the Jeep with the winch. Uh, so as you can see, the bumper is mounted and so is the winch. Nice and solid. So now I got to wire it. Um, wiring is pretty darn simple. There's this positive cable on the back of it. And for whatever reason, the negative cable is detached and in the box. Uh, so there's a stud on the back of it I have to attach the negative cable to, and then they both get run up to the battery. Negative cable. They love their zip ties. I gotta get some cutters. All right, so I'm gonna get the hood open, get this negative terminal. Maybe I'll show you where it mounts, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so you probably can't see it all that well, but on the back of here, there's this stud with a half inch nut on it and a lock washer and a flat washer. On there, the ground that comes from the control module is mounted. It's already attached. So what we do is we take the ground cable that we pull out of the box, and we attach it there. Why they don't attach it from the factory, I don't know. Yeah, this goes on here. Then the flat washer. Then the lock washer. Now a smart person would have mounted all this before they put it on the Jeep. Have a lot more room. I'm not always a smart person. But it would have been a whole lot easier if I had done that. There we go. All right, I think it started. Okay. Okay, it's tight enough, snugged up, that it won't fall off but I can still move it if I want to. And I may want to. So I'm kind of thinking that these are gonna go underneath the grill and into the engine compartment up kind of behind the light. I'm gonna figure all that out and then I'm gonna get this wired. So stay tuned. Okay, so I've got them into the engine compartment. Wasn't that hard. I did exactly what I said I was gonna do. I ran it off the back of the winch, obviously. I don't know if you can see this in frame, but I ran it underneath the grill, basically beneath the headlight and right up behind the grill, comes up right behind the headlight. So, now I'm gonna try to wrap these sort of along the fender back to the battery and then that's kinda it, you're done. Looks like I can run them underneath the fuse block here. That might be nice. Just run it through the bracket here. One thing you do want to be careful of, of course, with any wires is chafing and whatnot. So just keep that in mind as you're running these. You don't want them to be vibrating and rubbing against anything sharp. Kind of tuck them in there. I'll probably zip tie them to the existing uh, wiring harness that runs through here. And there we are. We're ready to mount. We're ready to attach.
right, so there it is. Cable's out, hook is mounted. Next thing I gotta do is just kind of cinch down the uh, cable. It doesn't flop around while I'm driving or whatever. If I had a fancy Factor 55 hook or something, that would solve that, but I don't. So I'm gonna use the old uh, shackle method. Like that, All right? And then we cinch it down and then the winch is kind of done. So supposedly, we have wireless operation. Remove battery tabs for use. Supposedly you turn this on. Yes. Maybe. Press and hold, perhaps. <laughs> we have on. I think that blinding blue light means that we have wireless. So let's see what happens. Indeed we do. Okay, so I'm going to spool this in without taking my fingers off. And there it is. Now, um... From what I read, you can plug this thing in. This cable here, uh, basically you can plug it into the remote and plug this into the side of the winch and you have basically a standard remote then. I don't know if that charges it too or if you have to replace the battery every so often. I mean, this is just Phillips screws, so it could just be there's a watch battery inside of this thing. I don't know, which sounds not so great to me, but you know, whatever. So this is obviously meant to be a backup for when that battery dies, because it's ridiculous long. Probably so you can get it up to the cab of the Jeep, as you'd expect. Oh, it turns off automatically, that's nice. Uh, so this goes in here. Only fits one way, it's keyed, that's handy. There we go. This goes in the side of the winch. Right here, also keyed, only fit one way. Now I have a red light, which tells me that it's in wired mode. Now we're gonna spool out. Look at that, spool in. Oh, that's out. Dang it, I pushed the wrong button again. In. There you go, folks. One, and it's actually pretty comfortable when you're not actually wearing gloves. The gloves made it really awkward, but without the gloves, it's really handy, which seems a little backwards to me, but whatever. There we go. Winch. Functional winch. I love it. This is your spool versus not... This is engaged. This is free spool. So if you need to just pull it out, that's what that's for, right? And you go like this, and then it'll work again. Press and hold, right? There we go. So now it should spool in. Yeah. So uh, you'll notice, if I push and hold it go off? Yes, it does. You'll notice that when I let off the button, it keeps going for a couple seconds, maybe a second. That's because there's all those gears inside of there moving. There's all kinds of gear reduction in here to make this little electric motor pull 8,000 pounds. Uh, so it takes a bit for that to spin down. And if your hand is in here while it's spinning down, it'll crush your fingers. Be aware of that. So there you go, folks. The install of a worn VR Evo Series 8S, which is a 8,000 pound winch on the front of my 2005 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Oh, and I may have fabricated a bumper to put it on. Yeah. So, I hope this video has been informative. I hope if you're wondering about the Evo Series winches and you want to know, you know, what are they all about? What's it look like? What, what kind of quality can I expect? I hope this video has helped show you that. Uh, I will definitely be updating uh, the interwebs and the world uh, as I use this winch to let people know 
you know, what to expect out of it and whether it's a quality winch or not. Some people don't like these things. They're scared away by the price point. Some people say they're not built as well as the, the Warren Xeons and the other lines of Warren winches. They're probably right because it is a value winch. This is a $600 winch as compared to a $1,200 or $1,500 winch of the same uh, pound rating. I don't care about all the crazy extra features. All I wanted was a functional winch. If I get a functional winch out of this, I'll be happy. I don't need a wireless winch, even though this one turned out that it is. I don't need a Bluetooth controlled winch. I don't need a winch with an air compressor on it. I don't need any of that. I just want a winch. I mean, all those things are nice, but I just don't need them and I don't really want them. I will definitely be following up. Uh, I'll probably, when I can get out and test this thing out a bit, pull some things around with it, whatever, maybe pull my dad's Jeep up his driveway or something, uh, then I'll update you guys on how well the thing works. Um, I don't expect it to fail out of the box like uh, some Harbor Freight winches are reported to do, um, but I do not necessarily expect the quality that you would get out of the higher dollar winches. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. I don't know. But we'll find out. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me install this winch. I'm really excited to finally have a winch. I've never had a winch. I've been wheeling for 20 years. Um, I've, I've wheeled with lots of people winches. I never really wheel alone. When I do, I don't go places I think I'm going to get stuck, but that's always a gamble. Now I've got a winch, I can feel a little more secure about going out, hunting, fishing, you know, things like that, where you're not necessarily looking for the challenge, but you may not have another vehicle with you. Those are the sort of things I do do with this Jeep. This isn't just a sport, go out and rock crawl Jeep. This is a daily Jeep that I use for camping and fishing and hunting and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me and I will catch you in the next video. Uh, remember, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up. And if you really like what you're seeing here, please subscribe to the channel so you can see more of what I'm doing. Some more fabrication, some more winty stuff. Maybe I'll actually get to go out wheeling soon. I really hope so. All right, thanks folks. Hey you, you stuck around to the end of the video. You're awesome. You should probably hit the subscribe link up over here and make sure you hit the notification bell. Otherwise, YouTube's not gonna actually tell you when I produce something new. You can also support me via Patreon by clicking the link up over here. And if you like this video, you should probably check out the recommended content that's coming up down over here. If you want merch like I'm wearing right here, you should go to swbcrawler.com and check out my shirts and hats and whatever else I've got for sale. Thanks for watching.